Um, all right, so we are recording. We're going to go over uh, doing the lab itself, the setup. We have our food items here. I'm going to have you take two food items. One is a marshmallow, and then I have a bag of like just old chips. I have Lay's. I have, oh, I've got Cheetos. Okay, so whatever chips you want, just also make sure that you're going to need to compare the known values. You want to look at the back of the packages to see the calories per gram. That's really important. Uh, for this one, for the marshmallow, they're on everything. Um, I'm going to show you how to set everything up, like my suggestions of how to set up the lab. You're going to use a pop can, and it's very sooty, so it's dirty because it's being, you know, we're burning something underneath, so it's okay that it um, catches on fire a little bit. We have our glass stir rod that we're going to be putting through right here. Remember, we're going to be taking the before temperature of the water, so you measure the water, decide how much you want to use. I like to use 100 because it's a nice even number and it's easy to line up. You're going to take that temperature and then you're going to put it in there. You can take the temperature within the graduated cylinder or you can take the temperature when it's in the pop can. Same thing, right? So you have that. And then you're like, well, how are we supposed to burn this item? Like, hold, like it's kind of confusing. So this is what I came up with. Mr. Snyder and myself came up with a, a while ago. So this is cork, which is hard to find and you don't want to kill any trees. So we reuse this. This cork is probably about 20 years old. So it's been in my lab here forever. Okay, so forever, right? So I've been in Hinsdale South. I changed careers 12 years ago. So I've been at Hinsdale South for 12 years and we used it before that. Okay, so just so you know, we're very conscious of reusing everything. We're using cork and then I just um, use a paper clip. This is a paper clip. I pierced it in there and I'm gonna suspend the object on this. I'm gonna wrap it around. I needed something to secure it. When it's something soft, like this small, well, stale marshmallow, I can maneuver it and I can actually just pierce it through. And I don't want it, I don't want it falling off that way. So I'm going to make it smaller. I can make it, I can readjust it. I can do whatever I want. If this breaks, big deal. I've got more paper clips. Okay. So it's not a big deal. This is just something we made. Um, if you have something that's not soft, let's say we take a Cheeto. You're like, wait a minute. I don't want to break my Cheeto. Get a nice size Cheeto. This is so stale, guys. So just bear with the smell of this. My Cheeto, maybe I'll make a little contraption. I'm going to work it through and I'll like try to wrap it up. Oh, I just broke it. So that's not good. I feel like you could just tear it off. Yeah, you could probably. Yeah, I like to wrap it around so it doesn't fall off. So maybe I'll wrap it around. I'll get a new one. No worries. Let me get a nice juicy one here. But we also have to take the before and after. So, you know, you got to, I just cut food on my mask. So we need to make sure that we take the, the, take this to the balance. I would actually suggest to take this to the balance, measure it before, take the device that you're going to set it up and measure it before as well. Problem is, is that let's say I have it all set up. This is for teaching purposes. I'm not doing the best of job here, but there we go. I'm wrapping it around, getting my hands nice and dirty. And I'm trying to make sure it's not gonna fall off when I'm burning it. Um, what I found is that, what happens if this guy falls off and keeps burning? I wanna make sure it's not on the tabletop and even though this is uh, flame resistant tabletop, I just wanna keep sh make sure I don't have to redo the whole lab. So I'm gonna use a glass watch plate and I'm gonna put it over like that. So that way, if you have this and you're trying to burn it, if anything, if the ashes fall off, it's still gonna be right there. And then you're like, well, matches get a little tricky because I'd have to sit here with the matches. So I found these in the back. And so we're going to use the nice little torch. And all you do is light it up. So there's three working ones. There's four working ones here. This one has a safety. That one does it. So you just press it. And then there you go. And then I was holding it for a while to, so it catches a nice flame. So you want to make sure you hold it for a while because you want to catch the whole thing on fire. This one's a little bit trickier to catch on fire. The marshmallow, you know, yes. goes really well. Exactly. This one, you have to kind of go at all angles. Meanwhile, though, you got to remember. Sorry, I'm walking back and forth here. Lab. You have it all set up. Right up here. You have it set up on this ring stand. So you have this here. You have your food item under here. You may have to adjust it. 
you may have to adjust it. You don't want it super high up off of the food. You want to try to get it underneath that curved area as much as possible. So without touching it, let's get it right there. That way when it catches on fire, we're getting less heat escaping. That's the idea. Heat is still going to escape here, but we're getting less of it escaping. The thermometer, when you when you do the after temperature, you're going to have to put the thermometer in. As soon as you see the flames are a little bit less, hold it there. You want to make sure you get that final temperature before it starts dropping back down to room temperature. Like get the maximum. So if it's still going up, let it keep going. But as soon as you start seeing it go back down, get that final temperature to be as most as accurate as possible. All right, so when we do the measurements after, all right, so maybe there was a suggestion that I could have made in the beginning. Since we're using these, we should be taking maybe the mass of the glass with the cork, right? Maybe the glass, and that way we can subtract it all, trying to find it after. When we're done, we're going to take the mass of this, and then we can do some subtraction intent to get just the mass that we burned. Okay, so that'll be the, the in our calculations then. Okay, so as you see your hands get dirty, right. you just use your um, apron. We have soap and water. I'm going to pause this video just quickly here. Pause. Resume recording. Okay, so I'm recording this again. So we're going to actually perform the lab. I'm going to have my setup. So I have my ring stand. I've suspended the pop can like this. I'm going to suspend it in here. But before I do so, I'm going to pour use my graduated cylinder. I'm going to measure 100 just because I like to use an even number. So I'm going to measure 100 milliliters, which is the same thing equivalent to 100 grams. So I'm going to make sure I get my measurements here. A little too much. A little too much. All right, we're perfect. So we're at 100 milliliters, which is the same equivalence to 100 grams. I'm going to take the temperature. At this point, it doesn't matter if I take the temperature. I take the temperature of the water in the graduate cylinder in the pop can. So I'll just make sure I take a temperature right now so I don't forget it. Room temperature is 24 to 25 degrees. So it's very common to be around 24, 25. Okay, we are at 24 degrees Celsius for our water initial temperature. So at this point, I'll pour that into my pop can. Let me take away the marshmallow. The first item we're going to um, measure or calculate in lab, we're going to use a Cheeto. So let me use a Cheeto. So I'm going to suspend this. And I still have to take some measurements of my Cheeto, but I also want to make sure I've got the distance away from the can, not too close and not too far. So it looks like it's a little bit too far. I might get too much uh, error in this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little closer. The pop can is nice because it has that curvature on it. So I, I'm pretty close. This will give me a better result. Okay, so at this point then, I'm gonna take my Cheeto off. This was the one I used in my demonstration of how to set up. So just swing it up. The whole thing should I just measure as the first mass? Yeah, I'm going to take the measurement of separately. Like I'll take the measurement of it separately. So I'll take my balance. I'll tear it, which is the zero. And I'll take the mass of my Cheeto by itself. And the Cheeto by itself is 1.69. So you want to make note of that. The Cheeto by itself is 1.69 grams. 1.69 grams. I also want to make sure I take the a measurement of my device. So the glass plate and the item that's going to be holding. Still not yeah, click it. The Press the button. Oh, the, the reset the button. So the glass plate and my device that's holding it is 65.81 grams. Again, it's 65.81 grams. It's always good to have more measurements than less. So I'll wrap this guy around and I'll take a measurement of everything all together. Let's see if I can get this. Not wobbly. I want it to be as secure as possible. 
possible so it doesn't fall off before I start burning it. Alright, so there's my mass with the item is 67.49. 67.49. It's fluctuating between 67.49 and 67.50. Alright, so we have our initial mass. Let's turn this back to our device. Okay. I've got just double checking. I've got my initial water temperature. I've got my initial or how much water I've used. I've got the initial uh, amount of mass in my object, which in this case is a Cheeto. Got my thermometer handy so that way. I can start to take the temperature, and now I'm going to burn. So I have my marshmallow and pork right here. This is the tricky part. So I want to make sure I can get as much on fire as right, possible. So you got a three value. You got a hundred grams of water. You get sixty five oh, yeah. grams of. This so as it's catching on fire, I can see the fat is getting lost. And now. Well, I can see the flames are going. I'm going to hold my thermometer. Cord, video cord here. Yes. So it's going up. It's up to 30 now. Thirty-two. The object's still burning. I don't want to get the cork on fire. It looks like the cork is catching on fire a little bit. I'll turn it around. The object is still burning. All right, so the whole thing, 61.13 grams. And they have a little bit of water on there because I don't want to get that cork on fire. There we go. Oh, nice. Okay, so now if you notice the cork is more on fire than the object. So I'll pull that away and douse that in, in the water a little bit because I just wanted to get a final temperature. Wow, we did awesome. 54 degrees, 50 to 4 degrees is the final temperature. So if you notice, I wanted to make sure I wasn't catching the cork on fire. Now the temperature is dropping. So I am at 54, that was the maximum. It's starting to go okay. down little by little. I wanted to make sure that I only got the object. That's why I put a little bit of water on that cork. Yes, our final temperature is 54 degrees Celsius. So then I'm going to go over here, take the mass after. The mass after is 66.36. 66.36 is my final mass. 66.36. All right, I'm going to actually put you on pause again. Resume recording. Okay, so now we're recording the second portion of the lab. I'll do the same exact measurements. Let me measure out 100 milliliters of water. Okay. I'm measuring the 100 mils in the graduated cylinder. I I just said the final mass of the whole thing was 60.33 grams. You got that? All right, so I have the... Uh, okay. 100 milliliters of water that I'm using, so 100 grams is the equivalence. I'll take the temperature of that initial temperature of that water. Again, it should read between 24 and 25 just because that's room temperature, and tap water is about that. It is 24 degrees Celsius, so you can make note of that in your uh, comp book, the 24 degrees Celsius for the second lab of marshmallow, we're going to use a marshmallow, is also 24 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put that in my pot pan, carefully, there we go, I'm going to suspend it, so I'm going to pierce the pan and suspend it. So now I've got my device. Then I'll take the I'll take the device only and take the measurements of that. 
the device only with the cork uh, and the glass plate is 66.01. My 66.01 for the device only. My marshmallow is 5.53 grams. So your marshmallow is 5.53 grams, 5.53 grams. This time I'm gonna pierce it because it is a marshmallow as stale as it is. I wanna see if I can get it to stay on. Try to pierce it all the way through. Let's just make sure. Let's just double check and make sure I got a, a total mass of that. Seventy-one point five three is my total mass with the marshmallow and my device. Seventy-one point five three. Seventy-one point five three grams. All right. So I'm going to take that. Make sure I have water on the side just for precautions. I have my thermometer ready to take my final temperature. I'm going to measure, oh, it looks too, too low, so I'll, hope, I'll turn up my calorimeter device and lower it a little bit. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to take it and light the marshmallow. This one shouldn't sugar lights pretty quickly, so. Oh, I beg to differ. I guess the steel marshmallow doesn't want to catch on fire. There we go. And I'm going to put my thermometer in there and hold it so it's not all the way to the bottom. I'm holding it in there just to get the final temperature. I'm going to watch it go up, the temperature. As it goes up, I can smell that sugar burning there. And the temperature is going up right now. I'll move it closer to the calorimeter device. All right, we're at 30 degrees so far. And it's going up from there. We're at 31, and it's still a little bit left to go here. Yeah. 32. And the cork is around 11. Yeah, I'm working on that right now. 32. I want to make sure it's if it's dropping, then I know it's my final. We're at 33. Let's wait a few seconds until it starts to drop. We're at 33 for being the max temperature so far. All right, 33. So we're, we're, it's already starting to drop. So now I'm going to take that as a max temperature. 33 degrees Celsius is the max temperature. For my marshmallow, so we want to note that we use 33 degrees or 33 degrees Celsius. So that just caught on there, it's no big deal. Just caught on the plate. Turn you over here, take a measurement. Make sure it's teared. Let's do that again. Tear it out to zero. And then we'll take the final mass, and the final mass is 70.73. Again, I'll repeat that, 70.73 grams, 70.73 grams. All right, so now we have the calculations. I'll clean up, I'll stop the recording, so that way we can use the, all the data to solve for the comparison of the actual bag. So what do we need now? Well, we need the actual information of the, the known values. So you're gonna walk around with me. We have the known values up here. Well, let's get the known values of both the marshmallow, marshmallow and the cheese. Marshmallow. So the known value for the marshmallow is right here in the top. It says your serving size is four pieces or 29 grams. And it's 100 calories for 29 grams. 100 calories for the four pieces for 29 grams. So that's the known for the marshmallow. We also used a Cheeto in my first lab. Let's take a look at the, the known value for this. The known value is 150 calories 
for 28 grams. And the 28 grams represents 21 pieces. So we've got 150 calories for 28 grams, which are 21 pieces. This is the nutritional value. So when we're asked to solve for our percent error, we have an experimental that we did in lab that we calculated. We're going to have the known values that we're going to calculate from the two right there. All right, so I'm going to stop recording now so you guys can get together and work on your labs.